Hello, welcome back to Tavis Moon. This is Embryo Saga, the medieval blacksmith management sim game. I wanted to play this game for a long time. I just haven't got a chance to you know, play the game. I just bought this game last week. Uh, this game was released on 22nd of June on 2022, and it's still in early access. So what is this game about? Well, it's been about being a blacksmith in medieval era, and there's a story mode, there's a Zen bug mode. Okay, let's see. Let's see the setting first. Um, language, English, or I don't know what this language is, but we're gonna stick with the English. So, video resolution, full screen, that's it, and sound, and that's pretty basic settings. So, you can't change your key bindings in this game, so you have to remember what those key bindings are. You cannot change it, so. Alright, here we go. There's something about being a blacksmith in a medieval era or the fantasy game or like being an alchemist in those settings. It's kind of appealing. I don't know. There's something to it. <laughs> so, okay, start the game. New game. Uh, I did play this a couple of times up to like day 9 and I have some understanding of the game, the basic of the game so let's get started so we can start with story mode on sandbox mode i'm gonna start with the story mode here being a smith isn't easy do you need a tutorial yes please i mean i did play tutorials i know but still we're gonna go in well then this is more like a brand than a home nothing to be done about it at least the smith itself is in decent condition control the camera by using wsd or the arrow keys to zoom in out or out use the mouse wheel pretty simple you can zoom out, you can zoom in, you can move up and down like this. You'll be managing medieval smithy and the main source of income for smithy is, of course, his orders. Let's open the shop for business and accept your first order. To do that, press the sign next to the store with the left mouse button. As you open up the shop, your first customer. Yeah, the, I like the graphic, I love the atmosphere of the game. Take a look at the order window, there you'll find the item, the resource needed for its creation, and the reward. See, we need 3 ingots to complete this order. We, if we complete this order, we're gonna get 7 gold. Accept the order by pressing the green check mark in the order's UI. Look, look at... Do you, do you see the difference here? Even though they use the same amount of material, the reward is different. So basically, you wanna take the order that uses a fewer ingot but gives you more money but you won't be always able to do that people won't wait forever they will leave if their patience runs out before the order is complete yeah, that's the patient here it's not going to run out because it's, we're still in tutorial but in the actual story mode it is going to go down except on the order by pressing the green check mark in order to then watch the feed when working on several orders at one you can set their priority Press the left mouse button to raise the order priority and the left right mouse button to lower it. So we can move it up, down, move it up and down. There can be five priority levels total. Order with the same priority are worked on based on their remaining time. The less time remaining, the more the smiths will focus on it. Raise the order's priority with the left mouse button or drag and drop the order card to the left side of the order list. Yeah, we already did that. Light, right click on the emblem to move the character there and start forging. There you go. So in the story mode, there's gonna be basically yeah, the story, story yeah, the main story, and there's gonna be a random event that happens um, as the day passes. The smith spend resource and receive gold after completing the order. Once the product is complete, it is automatically given to the customer. Orders are made with ingot. Ingots are smelted from ore, which can be mined or purchased. You don't have access to mine yet, so let's order some ore. Open the merchant store. So with this, we can order all ingot and other resource and food. And, yeah, we're gonna get into that later on. But let's see what we can do here. All goods from the store are delivered by courier. You will have to wait for a bit before he arrives. In the meantime, you can smelt the rest of the all ingot ingot. One piece of ore is good for one ingot. The smith will smelt ingot one after another until they run out of ore. See, yeah, that's the amount of ore we have. That's the amount of ingot we have right now. So we. If we order something from the merchant, we have to wait until this courier drops it off in this chest. 
Now comes the second order, you have more than enough ingots. Hurry before the customer gets tired of waiting. Come on, here we go. There you go. Great job. You can spend the money you have earned on upgrading smithy and building new rooms. Before building, let's close the store. Closing the store tells your customer that no new orders are accepted, but those who are waiting for their order will stay. Close the store with left mouse button. This could use some furniture and annex for the kitchen. Enable building mode. We can build a room. There you go. We can change the type, but that doesn't matter because it's gonna be always gonna be the same. It's, it's, we're still in tutorial here. Each room's construction takes some time. You will have to wait for the builder to finish their work. You can purchase the furniture right away. Let's set up your first living room. You will need a bed, table, and a chair. Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you buy, really. I'm gonna buy the expensive one. <laughs> because we can. Excellent, now I have a place to sleep. We can do the kitchen later. Now I can bring my wife and son over. Okay, so that's the end of tutorial. If you skip the tutorial, this is where you begin. So this is the beginning of your story mode, 13 years later. That's it, hold the hammer tight, swing your arm up and strike the blank. I can't. I will never become a master like you. Listen, when your mother and I came to France, we didn't have a single penny on us, nothing but fire in the eyes and my old instrument. So we are in France, that's important. So, and we are from England. So, really, not a single penny? Not more than a couple of sailors for sure. This is Arthur, the hero of this story and your main character. Yep. Since childhood, he's been helping his father in the fort, but he's pretty good in any kind of crop. We have a lot of work today, son. Go flip the sign. We are opening. Left click on the sign to start executing orders. Look, it's Finley. His whole family comes to the fair every year. The young lady next to him is his daughter, Olivia. Is he the merchant from the Gascony? Yes, judging by the look on his face, he's happy with my forging. There goes Jim Jarkus Jr. Can't stand that guy. There, there, his father is a respectable craftsman. And Jim Jarkus Jr. isn't too slow either, though he didn't inherit his father's talent. Don't let your emotion get the better of you. Learn how to conduct business, because that's what he excels at. So he's more like a businessman rather than blacksmith. And yeah. He's, he's, he's like an um, antagonist character in this story. <laughs> Oscar, kind of rival, antagonist, a bad guy, I suppose. Oscar, you are here too. How are you faring? Thanks for the instrument, and the harness is also perfect. Glad to see you at the fair. What brings you here, Finney? I'd like to order a small trinket, a brooch for my beloved daughter. Do this for me, would you? It's a piece of cake, right, son? You got this. Monsieur Finley and Mademoiselle Olivia, I'm glad to see you both. Hello, Arthur, Oscar. Uh, he's obviously French. Why didn't you order the brooch from my father? His shop is just over there. For a lady as charming as the fair Olivia, I could have even given you a discount. Thank you, Jinjakus, but Oscar and I have gone through hell and high water together. Any orders I have are only for him. Well, let's see how Arthur does it then. Sometimes you will have to make a choice that will affect events further in the story. You will see one of them now. Each option have a chance of success and failure. Search them carefully. You won't be able to go back on your choice. So this is the very important system here. Like, so you, you can choose. There's the three options here. And each option has a success chance. And, and you can also fail. So you have to... Things are not always gonna go in your way, basically. So we can use the jewel, but the, the jewel belongs to the Baron, so there will be consequences if you choose choose this option. So you have to think. And the game doesn't really tell you what's gonna happen. I mean, it kind of tells you that it's going to please Olivia, it's gonna please the father, working is a fake jewel. And Olivia might understand it's a fake, it's a bit awkward. Yeah. So this has a low percentage chance of succeed. This has high percent chance of succeed. But if I use the jewel, there will be consequences. Just wait and see. So I'm just gonna I, I know what's gonna happen because I played this 
a couple of times in order to in order to get uh, understand the game a bit. I uh, I also wanted to what happens if you like use a fake tool and whatnot, but there's always chance that this also can fail. So you have to keep that in mind. So I'm gonna make a simple broach. I'm not gonna use the tool. That's a seventy percent chance it can still fail. It did happen. <laughs> That is all done here. Let me see. The work is absolutely sunny. So we didn't fail. If we failed, it's the dialogue is going to be different. The game doesn't tell you though. So you have to read the dialogue and to, to see and understand if the option you choose has actually failed or not. Come, Not bad. Not bad at all. Never would have thought I had made it if I hadn't seen it for myself. Yeah, I just don't like this character. I mean, it's really annoying. Do you really think your blacksmiths are the only one who knew their way around the fort? My answer is a natural. My god, what a marvel. Thank you so much, Dad. Look at the way it glittered in the sun. Wow, my friend, I'm impressed. Here, I'll gladly pay you extra. If you'd better be ready, I will tell everyone about your amazing skills. Hello, blacksmith. Still working hard? Yes, more or less. My son's helping out a lot. He's even much better than me at some things now. Ah, he really looks like you. Now then, will you make me a ring? We'll do our best. Get to it, sir. Good day, Eastwind Baron. If you had given the order to my father, you had only have your new ring. I'm aware of your father's skill as a craftsman. However, Oscar can do the same work for half the price and guarantees quality. So yeah, this is the second choice in the story mode. And if I use the jewel on the brooch for the Olivia, then I wouldn't have any. I would have only two options. I, I can't pick up this option because we have used the jewel on the previous choice, but we didn't use it, so we can choose this option now. So there will be consequences. You have to be a bit careful which choice you make. Sometimes they, the game directly tells you what's gonna happen, but sometimes you just don't know what's gonna happen. Just don't know. You just have to play it out and un understand what what is gonna happen. I mean, that's a good thing about this game and also kind of bad thing about the game because you can't go back. Once you make a choice, you can't go back unless you just like, start, over the f start over from the beginning again. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what I mean. I just <laughs> anyway, um, so we can tell the Baron that I've lost the jewel. He's going to be angry. But it doesn't make sense, right? What are you going to do with the jewel anyway? So... You got the jewel, so make a jewel equals to ring for the Baron, just be honest. This also still can fail, I failed it. So if I, if we succeed this, the Baron will be happy. You, we can use a fake jewel for the Baron's ring. It only has 30% chance to succeed. If we succeed, we get 50 gold, but the father will be very angry. But the thing is, I tried this a lot. I just never got this to work. I just somehow, we always start with the same amount of gold. I mean, if you can start with extra 50 gold, that's actually, that actually matters a lot in the early game. But this don't, I don't think this works as it's intended to. Because I try this a lot. I just, I can't just never, it doesn't seem like we can actually, it doesn't seem like this one works as it intended to. I never start the game with extra 50 gold, even if I succeed. I don't think this works at all. So I'm gonna do this because I tried this. I I, I restart the game a whole bunch of time and always chose the third option. Somehow I even if I succeed this 30% chance, the dialogue is kind of obvious that you succeed, the father will be angry. The problem is we don't get 50 gold. So there's no point to choosing this option. So I'm just gonna make a during Christmas for the Baron here. I don't know if that's a bug or is it intended to be? Oh, is it really done? It's ready, sir. Here. So it's still bear on such a fine gem that even you, Arthur, would be hard pressed to ruin it. Thank you, Junjakus. Points will remain the same on your own one day. Oh, wow. Not bad. Good work. You are chip of the old block. Good luck. So we succeeded. If we fail the 70, 80%, I think it was 80% chance here. You can still fail. Keep that in mind. If I fail, the 80%. The dialogue will be different. They're gonna mention that I did something wrong and like the Baron will be angry. Thanks, it's great to have your work appreciated. Yeah, so we succeeded. There you go. 
you can fail. You, you guys can try for yourself. I, I, I did this. Um, I, I restart the story a lot, you know, to see if, if those options actually work. Yeah, but some of them doesn't work in the early game. That is the later in the later game, it does seem like it's working. But these two options doesn't seem like it matters too much. Father, what do you think about me and Olivia? Can we be friends? We're just not their equal son, but in a merchant's family, a groom is judged by how fat his purse is. Cheer up, everything is in your hands. My father's words were no surprise to me. Inequality is both a skirt and the foundation of a society. However, the sister's smile and charming eyes of a merchant's daughter made my heart ache. The fair was coming to an end, so we gathered our belongings to and set off home. It was the last fair I got to visit with my father. The disease hit him hard, but even to his last breath, he did his best to transfer his knowledge and skills to me, even when he could barely hold the hammer in his trembling hand. I had no choice but to make my father proud and become a decent apprentice. You have a small house and a forge at your disposal. It's not much, but still better than starting from the scratch. Here your glorious path to wealth and heart of your beloved girl begins. For all this lies far ahead, and for now, kindle the forge. Time to blow the dust of my father's anvil. Let's see what I can still remember. So from the start, you want yeah, we start with 200 gold. I try to get the dog option. To, and it, it does seem like the dialogue says I succeeded, but I always start with 200 gold, no matter what. So not sure. Not sure. I'm not sure if that's working as intended. Yeah, I think I already talked about that. Sorry about that. Just rambling on. Anyway, we, at the start of the game, you probably want to pause the game, press by space. Now we can change the speed of the game by pressing two, three, four hotkeys. So this is our main character, Arthur. Uh, this is the equipment here. We start with this universal tool. We need this tool to work on the forge and smithing and smelting. We need that. We're gonna get more equipment later on. The books uh, it doesn't matter right now. So this is HP, your health point. This is my our energy. This is gonna get low by we when we're doing some work. This is gonna get low when we're doing some work. The work cessation basically is this is our hungry meter basically. So our character is gonna get hungry, so we have to feed him as well. So this is our main character. Protagonist has no special abilities. Can be fired, of course. I can fire him. So this is like um the trait. Uh, bar. You can get positive trait or negative trait, and you can also get a buff, and it's gonna show up here. You can get temporary buff. It's gonna show up here. It's gonna tell us how much time is remaining on the buff, and this is the number of days here. This is the amount of gold coin we have right now. This is the fame, and this is the ingot and ore. This is uh, wood and logs. This is a resource that we need. So let's get. To the construction first, build a room. You probably want to build a room down here. And we have to wait until the construction is done. So from the get-go, you want to build this first. And then Okay, let me get out of this build mode. And I wanna you wanna open the shop right away. Then send Arthur to smell because you have a couple of ores to begin with. So you don't want to waste your time. You, you always want to. You always want your character to do something. Okay, so that's what our first come on. Okay, this is day one, so it's not gonna matter. Okay, so look at this. This is this is Ingrid required complete order. He, he's gonna pay five gold. It's not a great deal. It's basically one in you in the day on day one. You want to get. Like uh, one ingot for two gold at least. That's how much you want. So it's a pretty bad deal here. Um, his, you can see these icons around the portrait around the order here. This, this, this tells you which factions this customer is coming from. So this customer is coming from the bandit faction. So there are fa five factions in total here. So there's gonna be England, France, bandit, holy church. And witches. So, so faction. Some factions will not like each other. 
basically England and France will hate each other, and Holy Church and witches will hate each other. The bandit is kind of neutral, but like England and France and like um, some some classes basically. This is bandit, and this guy be like a merchant, knight, soldier. There's a different class in the game. Um, in the game, it's for the customer, and some of the some of those class customer will not like bandit. So you have to watch out for that. But on day one, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can refuse the order, reject the order as well. This is going to make the customer unhappy, and sometimes it will drop the relationship with that faction. So this this customer was from the bandit, so I rejected him, and there's a chance. It's going to decrease the relationship with that faction so you have to watch out for that but doesn't matter on day one it's the relationship uh with the factions gonna start effect on day two after you get your first worker so on day one doesn't matter just reject just reject the customer if you don't like the ratio that they have three for five that's not good so i'm gonna reject that as well I'm gonna move him in the forge. Three for five, really. Keep an eye on your character's energy. A tired character will make a mistake while forging and may damage the workpiece. Then your works to sleep so they can regain energy. The more comfortable the bed, the faster you pay the rest. Come on, give me some good order here. Two for four. Yes, it's decent. I'm gonna take it. For first day, you, you always want more than like. Yeah, 2 for 4, that's decent. I'm gonna take that one as well. Your character has received new trait. Characters can receive negative and positive traits. Each affect the character's behavior in a specific way. Carefully read their description and pick the best assignment for each worker. So we just received a negative trait, God-fearing. This is very common trait you can get early on. It's very annoying one as well. God-fearing, there's a 15% chance that this worker might stop to pray while working that's really bad trade and you can get this really frequently <laughs> i really don't like this trade so usually what <sighs> i got this really early right now so it's not good it's just not good this trade is bad nothing i can do about it right now so i'm gonna stick with it but oh uh, this is really good deal see one ingot for five gold that's really good deal so i'm gonna take that so we have to complete five orders. The one for four isn't bad either, so I'm gonna take that deal as well. Just give me a couple of days. So um, there's also depth as well. So the customer, if we complete this order, the customer is not going to pay us right away. So it's kind of bad, but the customer will pay us later on. The cus this customer is gonna leave. And sometime later, it's just gonna pop up here and just gonna pay us. So we, we're even gonna get the money, it's just that we're gonna get it later on. Sometimes this has a really good ratio, sometimes it really has a bad ratio. You can reject and the customer might wanna negotiate and negotiate with the orders. That does happen sometimes. So you have to keep that in mind. So I'm gonna accept this order anyway. So that's done. I'm running out of oil again. Time to dig a shaft. Sooner or later, you'll start expanding your fort, building more rooms, and even digging deep into the earth. Each fort needs a constant supply of oil. You can purchase from the merchant, but it's much more efficient to mine it yourself. Let's dig a shaft right in our cellar. To expand and upgrade the fort, open the construction menu, R T Q. Excellent. Now choose the type of your new room. Each room has its own function and requires specific furniture. A room that doesn't have a function or the required furniture will remain inactive. An excla exclamation mark will notify you of that. Press the exclamation mark to choose the room type or find furniture depending on what the room lacks before it can become operational. So here we go. I built the room at the start because it's gonna take time. So while you're waiting for your room to build, like if I if I didn't build the room, I could I I have nothing else to do, so I have to wait for that. So that's why I built the room as soon as we start up the game here. So now it's yeah, this room is currently empty. We have to choose a room type. 
So we have to get the mine going. So choose mine. So in this one, this one need the the room requirement for the mine is mine entrance and one crate. So you can just go down here, workbenches, and choose mine entrance. So I want to place. You can place either the either side, but personally, I like to place the mine entrance close to the letters because you have the worker have to travel between the mine entrance and crate to deliver the ore. So I want to build this close to the letter, and then you want to build chest. You can get the cheaper one, but it's gonna hold only ten ore. So personally. Kind of want to get the best one possible. So this is gonna go hold 15 ore, but it's, the price is 10 gold higher. I'm gonna get this one. So I'm gonna build these close to the ladder here. So the traveling time between the entrance and the chest is reduced if I place it like this. And another thing I have, I have to keep in mind is I can't, even though I have enough room, I cannot place extra chest on either side. So you have to keep that in mind. So there's a number of limit of furniture you can place on the room. So you have to keep that in mind as well. So now we have mine done. I'm gonna go back. And we can send the workers out the mine. So since we got the mine operational, we're gonna get the new equipment, grandfather's mining equipment. There's plus one mining level. So you wanna use that when you are mining. Because the universal tool give you minus one mining level, minus one sharpening, minus one woodworking, minus one log processing. So, you, but you have to have this equipped in order to do the, any smelting or smithing. Yeah, so you have to keep that in mind. So now I have plus one mining. So I'm gonna go, the character's gonna go down. And it's gonna take a, take some time to get the ore, and the character the character is going to deliver the ore from the entrance to the crate and you can see the crate can hold 15 15 ore and once this gets full the character will travel up to this crate over here this is our default crate if this gets full the character have to travel all the way up here to here the ideal situation is you always want to spend your ore um, so the character have to only travel between these two but that's not gonna be that's gonna gonna happen in the early games, so I'm gonna keep. And I did get another trait: the surge of strength. The work the worker does their work 30% faster if there's a situation as sleep levels are over 75%. Now that's that's not a bad trait, really. But this one is pretty bad. Uh, I'm just gonna keep that going here. Day one doesn't matter. You you just want to get the best one possible. Reject one for four is really good, but three for six is not bad. Two for five isn't bad either. Three for eight is pretty good. You see, this is yeah. Look, this is that that's the God fearing negative uh, trait impact here. So she stopped for praying. Yeah. See, that took like two or three seconds. I really don't like that. And every time it happens, it sometimes stops your character from working all together. So you have to assign them to work again. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, I'm just let <laughs> I'm just letting them go. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna use another save file. I'm just trying to use this to explain what's going what's happening. I mean <sighs> I really hate it we got this guy fearing from the get-go. So one for four, one for six, that's a really good deal. Okay, we're almost full with our all capacity. We're almost done. 32. Okay. So I try to, to smell the ore, but these two won't do anything here. So if I want to smell something, I have to unequip this. And we have to equip the universal tool in order to smell something. So you have to keep that in mind.
So I'm I'm getting ready for my ops. Now on the second day, you are gonna get your first apprentice. It's extra work basically. It's hard to work in the forge alone. The village chief has sent you three young men who want to become your apprentice. This young man is new to the village. He came from Gascony. My name is Dirty, Master Blacksmith. Monty is the local trickster and rascal. He tries to look like a nobleman in everything he does. My name is Monty, sir. I wanted to become your apprentice for ages. If you will help me. And this is Stone, win of all the fight and wrestling contests in the village. I can do all sorts of things. I'm strong as an orc. I'm sure I'll be useful. So which of them is worthy to becoming your apprentice? So this is another choice here. So apprentice is basically your worker. So it, they kind of have. Uh, so each of them has a have a different description here. The third is from the friends. So if I hire him, the England is not going to like us. So the relationship with England will get worse by ten point. But the France will like us. So France increase the. It's going to increase the relationship with France by five point. For the Monty though, <laughs> both England and France relationship will get worse by ten point. But the relation with bandits will improve by 15 points. For the stone, the Eng relation in England will improve by 5 points, but relation with the friends will get worse by 10 points. And I kind of wish this tells you, but this doesn't tell me anything about the worker, except where they're from, and like it does give you some description, but it doesn't tell you what positive trait and negative trait they start with so you you have to find that out on your own by hiring the, hiring them basically so, so i had to like restart a couple of games in order to see if their starting trait is is it randomized or is fixed but it, it seems like their starting trait is fixed on each character so third season will start with Smithing experience grows 30% faster, that's his positive trait. The negative trait is weakling. The movement slows down while he's carrying the item. Basically, he's not good at mining because he's going to slow down while carrying the ore. So he's, there's this is not good for mining but good for smithing because his experience in smithing is going to increase 30% faster. So Monty's deal is Monty have a positive trait that he gets a 15% chance of getting additional coin for a metal item he created. But the negative trait is greedy. Um, he's going to leave when you fail to pay him. You have to pay salary to your workers. So because Monty has a negative trait, greedy, he's going to leave when you fail to pay him. Um, the workers gonna get unhappy if you fail to pay them. But they're not gonna leave right away. They're gonna get unhappy, then unhappy, then eventually they're gonna leave. But with the Monty, he's gonna leave as soon as you fail to pay him. So it's kind of bad trade, but it is manageable as long as you have some money in the bank. You can deal with that. So that's kind of okay trade. And for Stone, Stone has a purpose trait. That's his positive trait. Worker's movement speed almost doesn't slow down while carrying. So he's very ideal for mining because he doesn't slow down too much while he's carrying the ore. However, his, his negative trait is arachnophobia. He's afraid of spider basically. So when he's working in the mine, there's a 10% chance he will have to stop work, working basically. And the stone is kind of okay in because he has a good trade for mining but he also have a bad trade for mining they kind of offset each other but yeah so now we understand what their starting positive and negative traits are you can we can now make a choice um personally monty is kind of my favorite to go and I also like the stone. I kind of generally want my main character to do smithing and smelting. So I'm gonna pick stone as my apprentice. Thanks, I'll be used to you. You now have an apprentice. He will need a room where he can rest after hard work. Keep an eye on his level of fatigue and pay his salary on time. 
Your previous skill will improve with time. And now let's get to it. Accept and successfully complete five orders with Stone's help. So that's why I <laughs> um, try not to take the orders so he can start working order right away. The forge's workers will demand to be paid to continue work. A refusal will upset them, and if their mood drops further, a, a princess will leave the forge. If you want to get rid of a worker, you don't need to remove the stay of the seller, you can just fire them. And here comes our first taxes. You are a smith, right? In the name of his majesty, the Duke of France, I'm authorized to collect the land tax for the good of our country. All of you just prey on honest people, no matter what you call yourself. Are you paying or not? So we have to pay the taxes, of course. We can refuse. But if we refuse, it's going to lower our fame level. Okay, I, I, I see what I see. Damn you, blacksmith. Now don't even try to hire an apprentice. The whole village will know what a rascal you are. So there is going to be a penalty if you don't pay taxes. The relationship with, fr with the friends got worse a lot to get <laughs> to start with. So you definitely want to pay taxes if you can. So you don't want to refuse, basically. It's a very bad idea to do that. Um, also with the factions, the 50 is kind of neutral with the factions. Um, you know, hold on, where can I see this journal? We can read the saga, we can do the faction skill. Okay. So here, here we go. So 50 is kind of neutral. Nothing kind, nothing kind of happens at 50. But we, if we increase by more than 65, for example, we gotta see the faction skill activate. So because we refuse to pay taxes, our relationship with France is reduced to 15. So now there's a two negative debuff activated right now. The Nazi rumor, the French are spreading Nazi rumors about you. Every day you lose seven prestige. Dubious work. The French claim you are not paying your workers. You only have access to one worker hiring cell. So this is pretty bad to get the diva. <laughs> so you kind of want to stay in the neutral zone if possible. But it's, it's got to be difficult later on in the game. So you will have to pick a side, basically. So that's... <sighs> we're not going to get into that right now. But there's something you got to know. So from, from now on, this relationship will start happen on the customers for example i'm gonna use the stone to take an order i'm gonna accept the order from the french and it's gonna be happy so uh that didn't increase uh ah, I... duke delacour is very displeased and a good day to you what have i done to anger him don't play the fool why aren't you working on our orders do you think the British will stay here forever? If you keep declining our order, your blacksmith's career will end when we take back the village. I just don't have time. I'm overloaded as it is. You can explain this all your, to your executioner if it's interest. I relay the information and now it's up to you. Yeah, that's kind of, um, that doesn't ha didn't happen on my previous one, but I think that happened because our relationship with the France is so bad right now. Okay, let's see. Okay, he's happy. Uh, relationship didn't increase. Okay. Stone also got the God-fearing trait. <sighs> so bad. But he got the positive trait as well. The worker has a real talent for smithing. His experience grows 30 percent faster. But this doesn't go well together with the stone. Because I kind of want to use stone as my mine worker. Okay, that didn't work as well. Come on. I just want to show them. Ah, that didn't happen either. Come on. That's strange. It should work. Okay, now let's see. That worked. So now I increase the I accept the order from the bandit and I completed it and it increased the relation with the bandit but it lowered because the other customers saw that I accept the order from the bandit and the other customer who was coming and saw it and he, 
they're gonna be very unhappy that I accept the order from Bandit. So relation with the France and with England from England both dropped by one point. So you have to watch out which customers are in line and you have to kind of think which one you want to accept. I know it's kind of complicated. I kind of wish this was much simpler, but yeah. The customer is happy. So if I reject you, there's a chance that the relationship with that faction can go down as well. So you cannot always rely on just um, rejecting the orders. But you can't also just take every order that's come to you. You have to make a choice every time. So there is that. So this start is actually terrible. <laughs> our main character and our first apprentice both got the God fearing. That's really bad. Um, this positive trait is okay. This positive doesn't work with the storm. So since I explained everything I had to explain, I'm probably gonna go back to my other save file and work from there. So hold, please. All right, we are back. Uh, so this is the actual save file that I want to play on. So Arson has um, this worker used to be a fencer, so he knows full well how to make a deadly weapon. There's a 25% chance that the knight that order weapons from him will agree to pay double the price. That's really good trade later on. So I'm gonna keep that. And also he he got early bird. Uh, this worker prefers to work in the morning. Over the period from dawn till dusk, there is a 20% chance of every order that he started to work on being 50% complete. This is not a bad trade. Um, you can get more than two trades, but it gets really hard after you get two trades. <laughs> that doesn't happen often. Yeah, so the stone will get another trade soon or later. Hopefully, it's not a negative trade. As long as it's not a negative trade, I'm happy. Because I really tried hard to get like a perfect trait for stone. Just doesn't seem like stone can get those traits for some reason. I don't know why, but it just doesn't happen. I get plenty of mantle, plenty of early bird, night or something like that, but I just never get mine related trait on stone somehow. Maybe I'm just being unlucky, but I'm just not gonna do the re like um, reroll and say reroll say. It just takes so long and it's really annoying to do it. So, so I'm kind of happy with the trait I have on the Arthur, so I'm gonna stick with it. So the main goal is to upgrade the store. Uh, it, uh, okay, it, it didn't show up yet, but we need to upgrade the store, you know, to increase our ingot capacity as well as the low capacity. And yeah, this, we're gonna get there soon. I'm gonna accept the order from the bandit. So the faction we have to watch out for, we did decrease our relationship with the friends because we accepted a stone as our first apprentice. So you kind of want to stay on neutral on all factions if it's possible because if you go past like 65 relationship points, you're gonna get a buff and if you go below something like 40 or 30, you're gonna, get a, you're gonna start to get a debuff. So it's a good idea to stay good side on every faction. It is possible to reach 100 relationship points on most factions at the same time, except France and English. That's kind of difficult because the game is going to make the force you to make a choice, either side with English or France, and it's going to drop your relationship by a lot. On like others, like a, if you side with the friends, it's going to drop your relationship with the English a lot, and it's really hard to recover from from those like relationship penalty. Once you go down to like um, twenty or zero, it's really hard to recover from that. <laughs> yeah, so you have to keep that in mind. And since we started with the stone, the problem is stone is like Englishman and. He's not gonna like it if you side with the friends, so there's something you have to keep in mind. So, for example, there's a witch, right? There's a witch. Um, so, holy order and, you know, witch don't like each other. So, if I accept the order from the witch and the mo the, the class from the holy order, show, holy church shows up like a monk or priest, 
And if I if, if they see me accepting order and complete the order, they not gonna like it. And it's gonna drop the relationship from the Holy Church. So you gotta be careful when you're accepting the orders from the other factions. When they appear at like uh, on the same screen, you have to watch out. So I'm gonna accept the orders. Four for seven isn't bad. Uh, is that a monk? No, but that's fine. So that's a bandit. Two for six. So bandit is kind of neutral, but some classes will hate bandit. Like a soldier, if if either France or England soldiers or knights sees sees this, uh, they're not gonna like it. So you gotta be careful about that too. There's a witch coming. Uh, okay. Let's go back to the screen here. We have two ingots left. We should work on it. Two for four. That's not a good deal, but I'm gonna accept it. Hopefully the monk doesn't show up. The worker needs to be fed regularly. A hungry worker will make mistake while forging and might damage the workpiece. If a worker remains unfit for a long time, they might starve to death. To cook food, you need to have enough provision in storage it can be purchased from the merchant. The higher your forge person, yeah, this that's the, it's, it's going to explain what I just told you before. The more appealing it will look to rich client. By increasing your forge prestige and upgrading the store, you can attract money banks who are willing to pay much more for their order than prison. In addition, store upgrade will increase your maximum workshop storage space for wood and ingot. Prestige is increased when you complete orders, but it has an upper limit. Upgrade the house decoration to increase your prestige limit. With a store like this, you can only serve pumpkins. Time to change this wang shaku shed for something more respectable. To upgrade your store, open the room construction menu and press the store grip. 4 for 6, that's terrible. Wait. Oh, we don't have ingot. Hold on. So, in order to upgrade the store, we need 200 gold coin. Required fame level, 50. So, our max prestige for fame level is 20 right now. So, in order to increase our upper limit, we have to... Uh, what is it? Change the room design to increase fame. And we click on it. And it shows you the design and click on this it said we need 40 gold yeah that's not right so <laughs> uh, don't, don't pay attention to the number day pass that's not the right one so this we need 40 gold to upgrade this and we're gonna this is going to increase fame but maximum fame by three so if i upgrade this it's gonna increase the fame by three so it's gonna be 23 but we don't want to do that just yet i mean your goal is to upgrade the store yeah that's that's fine, sure. But you, what you really want to do, you want to get, you want to hire extra workers before day four. I mean, on day four at least. It's really hard to hire workers before day four. But on day four, you can actually hire extra workers if you plan this carefully. So I'm gonna build another room. Room in the balcony. And also has to eat. Uh, but before that, we should complete the orders. Three for four. I'm gonna turn it away. So you gotta be careful when you reject them. They might get unhappy. It's gonna drop the relationship as well. So you gotta be careful when you reject people. Ah, oh, three for thirteen. That's too good. That's too good to pass up. Oh come on! I didn't want to do that. Four for ten. That's not bad. I think I'm gonna gotta, gotta close this one. Okay, gotta work on this fast. Okay, now we gotta eat. So we have one food in the storage. So we wanna eat. So we gotta have some food in the cabinet. So I'm gonna order some because we just ran out of food. The reason for there is a reason that I didn't order the food before because as you can see it cost the one food cost five gold. But if I order three, it's gonna cost only 14. So you, you save a little bit of money here. Little bit. Just one gold save, but when you go go up and unlock the other stuff as well, it's gonna save a lot more than one gold. So that's why you want to buy in a bird. You can also get a temporary buff as well on this on this um here. Uh, on this screen right here. Okay, for example, let's see if I get a buff or not. I didn't get the buff. Ah, oh, there is buff. Okay. So, employee is full. His energy decreased 1.5 times slower. Duration, 180 seconds. So, that's a good buff. So, you want to you wanna keep him working until this buff runs out. 
the hot stone. Why are you not doing anything? Okay, go back down. Please work. So the game is gonna automatically gonna is going to save when the day is passed. Did I talk about that? I'm not sure. So if you make some kind of mistake, you wanna redo the whole day, you kind of have to go out F4 and redo the game. Otherwise, when the day goes, when when the day passes to the next day, it's going to override your save automatically. So you have to watch out for that. The stone is working. Oh. Well, that's not a bad trait. I mean, it's better than negative trait, so I'm gonna keep that. Plus, I'm, I'll make sure I'll save the game. Best day three. Still working on the orders. Okay, come on. I wanna go to sleep, but I can't. Oh, both of them need to go to sleep. That's bad. That's actually not a good sign. Hmm. Okay, I want to open the shop now because we have this um, early bird trade. It's gonna help us a lot if we open the shop in the morning. So I'm gonna let stone sleep. Uh, five to five ingots for eight. That's a terrible offer here. I'm gonna reject that. So be it. A couple of points. Yeah, this this kind of that is, yeah, this is the negotiation here. It showed up. In a gold frame, but it didn't show up before, so it doesn't help. But this tells you that it's framed in gold. Negotiate a will order are framed in gold. But how do I negotiate? I don't know. As you can see, I tried to reject it, but he said, Oh, I'm gonna increase the price. So we wanna accept it now. But still, five ingots for nine gold is not that great. We do want to increase our relations with the church, so I'm gonna get it, but not happy about it. And how how are you here? So two for four. We probably want to increase our relations with the France as well. Two for eight is good. I'm gonna take that. We do want to stay in the neutral if it's possible. It's really hard, but it is it possible. Four for nine is kind of okay. I'm gonna take it. Oh, four for fourteen is pretty good. It's one thing I have to watch out is we have to watch out for the monk. Okay, there's no monk. Okay, that's good. Three for nine. Two for seven is good. Can I take that? Oh, monk is coming. Two for five, kind of okay. Not great. Okay, now the problem is if I stop, if I accept the order from the monk, which is gonna get unhappy, and sometimes it can drop your relationship to minus ten. That's huge penalty, so you gotta watch out for when both of them shows up. The things I can do is like 2 for 5 isn't great, 3 for 11 is kinda okay. So I'm gonna reject the order, he's gonna leave. Once he leaves, I'm gonna accept the order and complete the order. So that way, the monk is not gonna get upset. Okay, that's not a monk. Okay, I never seen this much in our village before. This is our main story quest. Gotta happen. Stone, go and find out who it is and what he wants. Okay, take your time, Stone. One thing I don't like is that when this kind of event happens, your character moves, actually moves to towards that location, and they don't go back to their previous job automatically. So it's kind of annoying thing. Hey, big guy, call the owner. I didn't come here all the way from the rank duty to talk to the apprentice. Get a move on, you oaf. And yeah, my main character also has to come all the way down here. And the thing is, when you're actually taking an order from the customer, there's kind of a problem. You have to get back there in time. Have you come from afar? How can I help? I came from the south and I'm setting up some trade link. I can bring you whatever you want for the best price, from Damascus steel to precision mixed instruments. Wanna work together? That might be good. Don't even think of refusing. I barely escaped the bandits myself. The walls are unsafe. Even bandits together like furniture where the armies have passed recently. You should agree, as I'm the bravest merchant of those prepared to offer their service to you. Bandits are all we need right now. If we are talking business, would you be so kind as to take an order from me? What should I make of for you? So we're gonna get 30 gold and 3 fame. Uh, fame really doesn't matter right now. 
we're not gonna get a whole lot of gold, but we cannot refuse this. This is it, this has to happen. This is a main one of the, the part of the main story, so we gotta take that no matter whether we like it or not, we gotta take it. So Stone is all rested up, so I'm gonna send him back down to the mine. Arthur. Yeah, I was yeah, I was doing this, right? So I think we gotta close up the shop now because we have to complete this. And two ingots, we have to craft this like five times each, so that means like 10 ingots here, 15 ingots there, 20 ingots there, so we need a lot of ingots to complete that. So I don't think we can take any more customer at the moment. So I gotta let the also go back. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm almost making it back, but I almost missed the order here. Oh, I almost missed it. See? Uh, two, there's no way I can make it in time. Okay, so... Come on, really? <sighs> well, sure. I gotta move this up. Okay, now that's done. Yeah, we are low on... Uh, yeah, we just received on a debuff because we're too low on energy. So this debuff showed up. So we still we need to send him to bed. So I'm gonna focus on finishing this first before we can accept any more customer. That's kind of annoying, but that's what we have to do. So we do need to build this room. I'm gonna build it into the living room. I definitely want a good bed, but I want I want to save some money first. We want to save as much money as possible. We gotta just get a crappy table, crappy table as well as chair. So we have 43 gold. So we, so now we built the living room. We can actually hire extra workers now. The problem is the workers cost a lot to hire, and we can't see what their skill is unless I test them. It's gonna cost us as cost. It's gonna cost some coin to do that, and also we can re-roll for the workers, but I don't want to do that. The best thing we you can do is. That's the money, about 150, like 180, uh, about 200 is a good amount before you can, like you can actually hire workers under like 150, 180 if you get lucky. So that's the main goal. We, we will get the workers on day 4. We have to get those money ready. The answer is... Okay, we got too many ingots, so we have... No, too many ores, we need to process them, otherwise um, stone has to come all the way up here. The ideal scenario is to keep the wall beneath 15, so he can travel between these two. But that's gonna be really hard thing to do when you only have two workers working at full time. So that's why I want to hire another worker as soon as possible. And stone, you are hungry, you gotta eat. When uh when the workers get hungry, like on this middle here, they're gonna just go to they gotta stop working and just gonna go to the kitchen to grab some food automatically. You can force them to go back to work, but they gotta just come back anyway or out of the work anyway. So just this good idea to just let them eat. Okay, I'm gonna work on some of these. Come on, come on, come on, that. Go, 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 go. Okay, so he's done. The thing about uh, one thing I don't like about is that once you are once your workers done eating the food, they don't go. They do not go automatically to their previous job. You have to tell them to go back. If I click on it, he's gonna go. Sometimes, yeah, he's not gonna go down. I, I click on the mine, he's not gonna go down. So I have to click on the ladder for him to go down. And then I can click the mine. And he's gonna start working in the mine again. So that's a kind of annoying thing. I wish they fixed that. Okay, we are out of ore again. So how many do we need? Uh, we need to crop seven more. Uh, we have to, I kind of want to get this out of the way so we can concentrate on the actual orders. Okay, 
there's uh, there's many good trade that you can get, but it's really difficult to get the trade, um, the character you want. <laughs> okay, we got twenty ingots, so we should. Okay, almost done. So you want to dedicate your workers specialized in one area only because more you level up, so they're gonna demand more salary. So it's not a good idea to spread your skill into all different areas. The stone is almost done with the, yeah. Yeah, you just see that that's the Arcanophobia activated right there. Ten percent chance of looking around to watch out for these creatures. He just got scared right there. It does happen quite often, but this one kind of makes up for it. So he's kind of good and bad at the mining at the same time. How much do we need? Four, eight. So yeah, we, we got enough ingots. So. Yeah, she just stopped working again. It's kind of annoying. Well then, not bad, not bad. I can see you are a reliable one. My shop is at your disposal. I'm sure we'll have a profitable partnership. Okay, let me eat my... I'm sorry. I gotta eat my chocolate here. I'm not supposed to eat chocolate, but hey, what can you do? I'm sure I mean mutually profitable. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I meant, of course. Yeah, don't trust merchant. <laughs> you know, the... Sh <laughs> they're gonna say nice things in front of you, but they always gonna make a profit. So don't trust um, merchant when they say, oh, we're not gonna make any profit by selling at this price. That's a that's lie. <laughs> Bold faced lie, if I ever tell you. You can't make money by being honest, you know, be a merchant. Uh, anyway, so that's done. So we have 118 gold. That's not enough to hire the workers. So we gotta get more money. So, are you ready? No. Uh, let's work on the thing. And another event is happening. I definitely should send you to bed. Hey there, Arthur, it's been a while. Have you decided to follow in your father's footsteps? Hey, Jin Jarkus Jr., if not me, then who? How's your dismissy going? Quite well off, thank you. That said, my father recently passed away, just like yours. So now, I'm just Jin Jarkus. It is all the will of God. I have quite great prospect for this smithy. Oh, my condolences. Why visit our humble smithy? Can't handle the orders? We are handling them quite well, quite well indeed. I just want to see how you are doing. There are only two smithies left in the province. Neither of us really need competition in times like these. What would you say if I offered to buy your smithy? You will be my right hand man. With your talent, it could be magnificent. Thank you for the offer, but my father didn't work himself to the bone just for me to sell the forge. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think you'd give it to us so easily. Well, next fair, we will see how we compare. By the way, I saw Finny's daughter, Olivia, a few days ago. She has blossomed into quite the beauty. Be sure to pay them a visit. I'm not surprised. She has always been fair. Why do you care? Well, you know, just remember how you look at her back at the fair. Finny will only agree that she married a rich man. He's a smart one. So don't get your hopes up and do think about my offer to buy the forge. Thank you for the advice, Jinjakus. Glad to see you, as always. I must take my leave, the work isn't going anywhere, and I don't have the time to wander around and get up into first business. You are a good lad, Arthur. Shame you have to work in the fields before long. Have fun with your smithy while you still can. I mean, it does make sense, you know, like, you don't need a competition, so maybe, you know, join forces together. You know, Jin Jaku seems like a very smooth talking, so like good businessman, but not a good craftsman. But our, the protagonist seems like a good craftsman, good blacksmith. So, yeah, it does make sense that the Jin Jackers want to buy our smithy. Yeah, but, and I also understand that you don't want to sell the forge the left by father. Yes, yeah, it's quite complicated, but hey, I do understand where this comes from. But I don't like this guy. <laughs> so, Arthur, you need to sleep. Okay, so let's save before we do anything else. Well, I think it's been long enough for this one episode, so thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Bye.